Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Bell Street Park. I'm Ron Nicoletti. It is Sunday afternoon, 11 races to look at. My buddy Pete Aiello has got the track and weather condition. The Sunday card begins with a fast main track and a good turf course, though the turf course would be upgraded to firm midway through the day. The first of the day over that turf course at five furlongs. Claimer is in for a price tag of $10,000, a field of nine. The favorite was the nine, Miss Lamborghini. Racing at Gulfstream. Picky, picky girl off a touch slow. The other's away almost in a perfect line with Histrionic from between horses up for the lead. Cowtown Jane away in second, Eternal Tempest on the outside third. First race favorite, Miss Lamborghini is away fourth, but she's on the improve. Then Gucci Gucci Girl, back to Cashless Society. Outside of her is Walking Primrose. The two at the back are Linda Nin and Picky Picky Girl. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Eternal Tempest comes away with the lead. Up on the outside, that's Miss Lamborghini now second. Back to third is Histrionic. Three wide, Gucci Gucci Girl. Girl tries to improve in between horses, Cowtown Jane, then Walking Prism Primrose and Cashless Society. Linda Nin is next, and at the back is Picky Picky Girl, and at the lead is Eternal Tempest. Eternal Tempest turns for home on top. To the attack now, Miss Lamborghini is second toward the inside. Cowtown Jane is surfacing at an upset price. Picky Picky Girl and Gucci Gucci Girl on the outside, but at the fence, Cowtown Jane has the lead for Richard Mitchell. It's Cowtown Jane, she's 30 to one, and she shocks the opening field to win it by two. Cashless Society second, Gucci Gucci Girl third. Huge upset to start the afternoon as number two, Cowtown Jane, comes from out of the clouds and wins going away under Richard Mitchell, for trainer Javier Negrete and owner Chantel McCoy, the daughter of Cowtown Cat, and had seen a long time between wins. She gets a win in the Sunday opener. To the second race at six furlong, starter allowance optional claiming event for Phillies and Mares. Scratch the four, better be fast, a field of six. Favorites included number two, 40 Sweetheart, and number five, Fergilicious. And they're up. Danessa again off a step slow. Good start from between horses for Pure Bliss. Treat her like star moving up on the outside. Then down at the rail, Hello Juliet on the comeback try has some speed. She'll be taken back off the lead of Pure Bliss. Danessa again after a stutter step getaway is fourth and on the improve, then Fergalicious. And 40 Sweetheart under restraint at the back of the field. She's a bit headstrong as they head past the half mile point. With the advantage, it's Pure Bliss in front by an neck. Danessa again on the outside is now second. Three wide. Fergalicious from between horses has treat her like star at the rail. Hello, Juliet. And two lengths back to 40s. Sweetheart. They make their way to the top of the stretch. They went 22 and 4 for the opening quarter speed. Pure Bliss. Juarez working overtime but maintaining the lead. Three wide and Fergalicious. Hello, Juliet is at the rail with treat her like star. The favorite has played no part in this. 40 Sweetheart, the last to turn in. Off the turn on the stretch drive. Pure Bliss still has the lead. Hello, Juliet. Punching up the fence and treat her like star on the outside. Treat her like star up for a narrow lead. Toward the rail, it's Hello, Juliet from between horses. Pure Bliss battles on. Three chances to the finish. Here's Hello, Juliet at the rail. Hello, Juliet in front. Second, treat her like star. Third was Danessa again. It was a strong comeback try for the daughter of Adios Charlie as number one, Hello, Juliet, wins a close decision under jockey Jonathan Gonzalez for trainer Rohan Crichton and owners Rohan Crichton and Paul Haddad. Second, number six, treat her like star in a game try ahead of number three, Pure Bliss, who also fired a big run today. She ended up third. Time for a commercial break. When we come back, the Sunday card rolls on. Turf racing right after this. Back now for race number three on the program. Start of another pick three. A mile on the 16th over the turf. Starter allowance optional claiming horses and for a price tag of $16,000. Scratch the seven Indy Gitta, a field of seven. Favorites were two, Pat M's Image and five, Madison Blues. 
From the center, Got Glee bounces away very well and is put right on the early lead toward the outside. That's Beachwood away in the top flight. Far outside goes Feed Me Carrots, who's taken in hand as Regan's Odyssey moves up to take second behind Got Glee, who rounds the first turn on top. It's Got Glee in front by almost two. Regan's Odyssey second, Madison Blues is third. From fourth in Beachwood, then Pat M's Image outside and Feed Me Carrots. And the back marker early is Voila, La Vitoire through an opening quarter in 23 and four. They bend into the backstretch. Got Glee where she wants to be on the engine here, a length and a half better than Regan's Odyssey second. These two have gone two better than Madison Blues, who sets up shop third ahead of Beachwood, out three wide, and on the improve is Feed Me Carrots. Then Pat M's image, she's second last, and the trailer remains, voila, la victoire. They head to the half mile point. They went 47 and four for a pretty reasonable early pace, and the leader is still Got Glee. Far outside, Feed Me Carrots moves to be third, but she's on the attack, forcing Regan's Odyssey to go after the leader. Back to fourth in Madison Blues, fifth is Beachwood. Two back to voila, la victoire, and the veteran Pat M's image is yet to play catch up as they round the far turn. Feed me carrots on a blitz on the outside of the leader. Got Glee, two back to Regan's Odyssey, then Madison Blues, Beachwood, three wide and trying to go on with it. As on the outside, it's Feed Me Carrots who powers to the front. Feed Me Carrots off the turn with the lead. Got Glee cuts the corner and tries to stay on second. Two back to Regan's Odyssey and Madison Blues on the outside in Beachwood with an eighth of a mile to go. Feed Me Carrots for the front. Feed Me Carrots now by two and a half. Up into second is Madison Madison Blues, but Feed Me Carrots right back for the new connections, two and a half clear. Madison Blues second, third was Regan's Odyssey, fourth was Beachwood. First start off the claim, a winning one for number eight, Feed Me Carrots, who continues to hold her form beautifully, and she was handled her well by jockey Sebastian Saez, who's back off a bit of a freshening himself for trainer Yvonne Belsor and owner Bruno Schickendons. It's Feed Me Carrots in the third. Five Madison Blues second, four Regan's Odyssey ran third. We moved out of the fourth race of the day at six and a half furlongs, made in claimers in for $10,000. A field of seven signed on. The favorite was the one, Hot Hippie. And they're off. Good start on the outside for White Beauty. Check the last Oriental Lady. Trying to go with the leader is Lady Eileen. Down at the inside, Hot Hippie moves to challenge. Away in fourth is Ty Badge. Then back to Aunt Betty, ahead of Beth Blessed Venezuela. And after a messy getaway, Oriental Lady is last of all as long shot Lady Eileen takes the lead. Lady Eileen in front now, three parts of a length from Hot Hippie in second, three wide, White Beauty third, four wide, Aunt Betty is now fourth. Down at the inside, Ty Bash follows along fifth, a two-length margin to Bless Venezuela, and the trailer is Oriental Lady. 23 and two for the opening quarter speed. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Now it's the favorite Hot Hippie who moves through inside to take the lead. Three wide, and Betty up to challenge now. Second in between horses, Lady Eileen is still there. Third, White Beauty ridden, trying to get a reply is Sanchez. Then at the inside, it's Ty Badge. At the back is Bless Venezuela, and Oriental Lady is Hot Hippie. Now has to quicken to try to hold off the rally from Aunt Betty on the outside. White Beauty is into the clear and back for more outside toward the rail, and Ty Badge completely up for grabs with three sixteenths to go. We have four chances here with the lead now belonging to Aunt Betty. Aunt Betty kicks two on top. White Beauty is trying to make ground second toward the inside tie badge. Hot Hippie no good, but Aunt Betty is, and Aunt Betty is kicked away with authority. She'll win it under Relu Gutierrez, two and a half. White Beauty second, Hot Hippie third. Number one, Hot Hippie looked a vulnerable favorite as she had been beaten in that role before. Make it two straight for Hot Hippie losing as the favorite. The maiden diploma to number three, Aunt Betty, under jockey Relu Gutierrez, trainer Antonio Sano, and the secure investments. To the fifth race we go. We move to the turf at about seven and a half furlongs. This is the first leg of the Gulfstream Park Summer Starter Series. For older horses racing two turns on turf, this race at seven and a half furlongs. Scratch number four, Diamond Square. A field of eight. The favorite was the one, Conquest Sandman. And they're off. Good start on the outside for Sherpa and Fundy's Tide. Chief Exchanger has speed, and Montalvo has to press on the accelerator to save ground with Conquest Sandman. Conquest Sandman has an early fight in the run of the first turn. Sherpa has the lead, three wide, and Fundy's tied as Conquest Sandman holds the inside edge. These two going very fast. They've opened four on Chief Exchanger, who sits the trip fourth. It's a gap of another three lengths back to the outside and Diamond Majesty from fifth. Then it's a gap of another four lengths back to what power ahead of Street Code. Out the back door early is Trouble in Phoenix. 
They whistled a quarter, 22 seconds flat. On the outside, Fundy's tied toward the rail. Conquest Sandman, the favorite, has got his back against the wall already as he had to wing through the opening quarter to get the lead. Fourth is Chief Exchanger. Then back fifth is Diamond Majesty as Sherpa is already feeling the strain from that early battle. He's backing out of it, and the leaders continue to kick on with it, trying to run on from the back is what power. He's had some pace to chase, so is Street Code as they wheel to the far turn. 45 and two for the opening half mile. Conquest Sandman's gonna have to prove he's much the best as he's been softened up by Fundy's Tide and Chief Exchanger let loose on the outside. Trying to run home from the back is What Power and Diamond Majesty with Street Code and the wrap at the top of the stretch. How much does Conquest Sandman have more to give? He turns for home on top. Chief Exchanger is second, Street Code is next. From the inside, a late run from Trouble in Phoenix. Final furlong, Carlos Montalvo trying to get 1 16th more from Conquest. Conquest Sandman, here's Street Code lunging late. Conquest Sandman, all heart. Here's the line, Conquest Sandman. Wow, that was fun. Conquest Sandman, so good and so game. He wins in 129 flat. Really can't say enough good things about the son of Scat Daddy. Number one, Conquest Sandman. He had every opportunity to throw out the anchor, and he really had every right to throw out the anchor in today's fifth race, but he was not doing that. He put his mind to business, dug in gamely, and held on for a gate-to-wire score under Carlos Montalvo. Trainer Juan Carlos Abario, who's done a great job with this horse for owner Costa Bravo. Second, number seven, Street Code. Third was number two, Trouble in Phoenix. Conquest Sandman, gamest of all. Zipper is pulling away. Ghost Zapper blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Odds of again has won. Ghost Zapper kicking clear. Judy the beauty. Back now for race number six on the program, start of today's Rainbow Six. We brought out two-year-old fillies to take center stage and race to the first finish line. Scratch the four, Tawa, a field of six. Favorite was the seven, first time proud. And they're off. Miss Unbridled Cat wins the break from the far outside. Miss Aramet is now charging to challenge, and there goes the newcomer, Blazing Brook. And Blazing Brook has an early tussle with Miss Aramet as they run to the far turn. Miss Aramet now crosses in front of Blazing Brook, who slams into the face of Leilani and moves first time proud up on the outside to take second and go after the leader. Five sixteenths away, first time proud, and Carlos Montavo stride to him a narrow lead. Toward the inside, that's Miss Aramet battling on second, three back to Blazing Brook third. Two and a half to Leilani, who's a driven fourth. A gap of four to Miss Marcella and Miss Unbridled Cat, and they're at the top of the stretch. With the advantage, it's now first time proud. Miss Aramet fights back toward the rail here for Chamafi. Gap of five lengths back to Miss Leilani, who's running on late with a 16th to go. First time proud has the lead. Miss Aramet is game, but she's second best to first time proud. First time proud wins two and a half. Second, Miss Aramet. Where did Miss Unbridled Cat come from? She got in the photo for third with Leilani in 53 flat. Number seven, First Time Proud, makes her second career start at winning one after a good try in her debut last out. Carlos Montalvo gets a quick fire double today. This one for David Braddy and owner and breeder Joel Sainer. Number six, Miss Aramet with a good try in her unveiling. She was second ahead of number five, Leilani, who ran third. She'll do better with more ground. We moved out of the seventh and feature race to Nicole's Dream Overnight Stakes at five furlongs over the turf. A field of eight, the favorites were four, Sound Defense, and five, Miss Mayhem. They're out the post, and they're off in the Nicole's Dream Stakes. Excellent beginning toward the outside for Awesome and Densome. Miss Mayhem has speed, and there goes Sound Defense. Sound Defense and Miss Mayhem, one, two. It's Sound Defense, the quicker of the two. Miss Mayhem is second, Bones is third, meant to be mine at the rail fourth, followed fifth by Ladies Island. Out wide, Awesome and Densome, then Little Christina, and Island Reward is last of all. She'll try to close in as they round the far turn. The two favorites match stride through a 21 and one opening quarter speed. On the inside, Sound Defense. On the outside, Miss Mayhem, three back to the gray bones. She's got a good shot if she can kick on from there. Three in front of little Christina, then meant to be mine in the wrap at the top of the stretch. With the lead now, Miss Mayhem puts a neck in front. Sound defense battles on second. Bones is third. Island Reward is on track late. Final eighth of a mile. Miss Mayhem has the lead. Island Reward rolling home. It's Miss Mayhem by two. Island Reward trying to get Bones for second. Miss Mayhem in front. 
Bob for that was Island Reward. Third was Bones, and then it was Sound Defense in 55 and three. Number five, Miss Mayhem continues to prove she's at the top of her division, sprinting on the turf here in South Florida. She gets the stakes tally against older horses today. Trainer Eddie Plisa Jr. and owner Lori Plisa, Edgar Zayas atop the daughter of Yes by Jiminy. Second, the one Island Reward. Third was the three, Bones. To the eighth race now on the start of the late pick four of one mile over the main track. Claimers in for $6,250. A very key scratch of seven hidden to win. So a field of six signed on. The favorites were two, Beauty of a Day, and three, Luna Lunita. And they're off. Good beginning there for Beauty of a Day. Luna Lunita has speed. That was Motion's first who checked into Flying Girl. Up on the outside goes Asian Moon Lady in Queen's Quarters is down toward the inside. So as they march out of the chute, it's jockey Luis Sanchez and Luna Lunita who have the lead by two. Beauty of a day is second, motions first is third on the outside Asian Moon Lady fourth. Following fifth is Queen's Quarters and after some early trouble, Flying Girl last of all behind a very ordinary opening quarter of 24 and four. So down the back stretch they go with five furlongs left to run. Beauty of a day will not let Luna Lunita get an easy lead. So Beauty of a day is within a neck of Luna Lunita, who's in the two path and still in front. Queen's Quarters and Oscar Ujoa down toward the inside third, ahead of Motions first, then to the outside Asian Moon Lady. The trailer is Flying Girl. Inside half a mile to go. They went the opening half mile in 48 and 2 as they leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Luna Lunita continues to lead. Here's a new challenge from Queen's Quarters, who's up on the outside to be second. Beauty of a Day is back to third. Motions first is now fourth. Dropping anchor was Asian Moon Lady with Flying Girl just in front of her as Queen's Quarters makes a serious bid for the lead. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Luna Lunita fights to hold it, but Queen's Quarters is up on the outside after three quarters in 113 flat Queens quarters comes away with the lead Luna Lunita trying to fight on second flying girl is now third but at four to one Queens quarters kicking clear it's Queens quarters in front by three Luna Lunita's trying to salvage second but Queens quarters and Oscar Ujoa come away to win it by five in the end Luna Lunita second beauty of a day third flying girl finish fourth number one Queens quarters had been facing a lot better although it was going two turns on turf and a lot of it was across the state she cuts back to one turn, moves to the main track, drops to a career low, and all of that, a four to one winner. Oscar Ulo, a dry road, the daughter of general quarters for owner trainer Juan, Juan Arriagata. To the ninth race now, the first leg of the late pick three on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Claimers, which have not won two, in for $10,000. Scratch the nine, Baby Aladet, rider change on 10, Precious Intent to Sammy Camacho. A field of 10, the favorites included one, Bullet the Blue Sky, and two, Mose Ginny. And they're off. Earhart off a step slow and Bullet the Blue Sky second last to begin. Sharp beginning for Rahi Momenta, who's quick to the front. Up on the outside goes Precious Intent to go after the leader early. Freckle to Freck is trying to get over from her high draw. She'll land third and three wide. Then Adio Sheik, and then down toward the rail goes Mose Ginny. Mose Ginny cuts the corner fourth. Moving three wide is Lilac Wine. Then down at the inside goes Moonshine Kate with Be Kind on the outside. Second last Earhart, and Bullet the Blue Sky is last of all for Edgar Zayas. Behind an opening quarter put up by Rahi Momenta in 23 and three. Rahi Momenta and Roberto Alvarado Jr. trying to relax on the front end. From the outside and now second is Precious Intent. Mos Ginny is at the rail third. Following along fourth while well in the two path is Freckle to Freck. Out three wide is Lilac Wine, then Be Kind and Earhart. Moonshine Kate is at the rail. Bullet the Blue Sky is out of last. That distinction now belongs to Adio Chic as they make their way to the final half mile. The opening half mile was 49 seconds flat. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. Rahi Momenta still in front by a neck. Three wide freckle to freck. Precious intent in the two path. Mose Jenny is loaded for Tyler G. Looking for some place to go. On the outside, Lilac Wine. Then comes Be Kind. Inside running Moonshine. Kate has a shot from there with Bullet to Blue Sky on her back. Outside and Earhart as they run to the top of the stretch. Rahi Momenta yet to be headed. Turns for home on top. From the outside, Mose Jenny's put into the clear to get out. After that gives room to Moonshine Kate toward the rail, then Bullet the Blue Sky. Eighth of a mile to go toward the rail. Moonshine Kate fired up down the center and Mose Ginny. Late run from Bullet the Blue Sky. Three chances. Mose Ginny for a narrow lead. Moonshine Kate at the rail. Here's Moonshine Kate at Mose Ginny, but Mose Ginny hangs on. Mose Ginny prevails narrowly from Moonshine Kate, then Bullet the Blue Sky at 143 and 3.
Tight decision, but number two, Moe's Jenny refuses to yield inside the final 16th of a mile. She vacated her spot on the rail and gave her shot to Moonshine Kate, but beat Moonshine Kate in a tight photo. Tyler Gaffleone rode the daughter of Uncle Moe for trainer Dave Fox and owner three Gin Guy in stable. Six, Moonshine Kate second, one bullet the blue sky, ran third. Time for another commercial break. When we come back, we'll bring you the late daily double. We're sprinting on the main track right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. OBS June, the two-year-old source. OBS two-year-old sales grads win at the rate of two stakes a week. June sell graduate Stormy Liberal defeated the world's best in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Another June sell grad, seeking the soul, captured the Grade 1 Clark Handicap. The OBS June sale is your final opportunity to acquire a promising two-year-old with stakes potential. Under TAC previews begin June 7th. OBS, we measure success by performance. We're back now for race number 10 on the program. The first half of the late daily double, six furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for 12,500. A field of seven. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. Level beginning. From the outside, color me pom-pom for the front. There goes Noble Venezuela quickly up to assume control. And it's the even money favorite, Noble Venezuela, who strides to a clear lead. Color me pom-pom is second, dark as midnight out of their third. Tiger Blood is now fourth with Eklos down at the inside fifth. It's a stretch of two to the back marker, Scam and Silver Chalice. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn with Noble Venezuela in front by a length. 22 and 1 for the quarter speed. On the outside, Color Me Pom Pom is there. Second, Dark as Midnight is now third. Racing on from fourth is Tiger Blood. Then to the outside goes Scam with Eklos. And the trailer is Silver Chalice. They run to the top of the stretch. Sebastian Saez gets to work on Noble Venezuela as Color Me Pom Pom issues the challenge under Gonzalez on the outside. And Color Me Pom Pom puts ahead in front. Right back at him is Noble Venezuela from second. Three lengths back to a rallying scam. Then to the inside and Eklos. Final eighth of a mile on the outside and color me Pom Pom to take the lead. Back to second is Noble Venezuela. Then third is scam. Eklos is fourth. Three to one the number. Color me Pom Pom in front. Noble Venezuela was second. Scam was third. Then Eklos and Silver Chalice. 111 flat. Breaking sharply to the outside was Kyle's boy. That did no favors to Poquito Loco. Out of the gate very fast is Rainstorm. And look at Rainstorm fly away past the six furlong point. He's open to six length lead now. 271 is second ahead of Chris Me Deadly in third, then Mexican Lucky from fourth. The Stifler drives it up at the rail. Three wide is Tiz from Boston. Mr. Mack on the far outside enjoys this fast early pace. Then comes Kyle's boy, a length and a half in front of Poquito Loco as they make their way to the far turn. Hey Bub is at the back. 22 and 3 for the opening quarter speed. Rainstorm was fleet footed early, but now we'll have to go faster as tackling him is the Stifler. And the Stifler from Montalvo on a move to take the lead. Rainstorm trying to kick with him second. Three back to 271, who's now third. Running on from fourth is Tiz from Boston. Two and a half clear of Mr. Mac fifth. That's all for Chris Me Deadly. Nobody else in shouting range. Out of last is Hey Bub with a quarter of a mile left to go. 46 and three for the opening half mile. The Stifler comes away with the lead, but he's on borrowed time as Tiz from Boston moves up alongside now and Tiz from Boston and Jaramillo blow by the leader. It's Tiz from Boston inside the final furlong in front by five and still moving away. Back to second is the Stifler down the center. Hey, bub, he's going to get a slice, but no way does he get from Tiz from Boston. Tiz from Boston, the son of Tizway, looking good in the goo. He'll win it by seven in the end. 
Hey, Bob. Up for second. Third was 271. Then the Stifler and Mr. Mac. And that wraps up Sunday's card. Remember, we're Dark for Live Racing on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But we're back here on, on Thursday at 1.15 p.m. with a nine race card. Boy, you got to be at Gulfstream Park. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.